Hello guys, welcome back to another amazing, amazing vlog and today what I'm going to do is to, you know, follow an African-American around just to see, you know, a day in a life of an African-American or American living here in Ghana and uh, the person I'm here with today is Michael oh, Kavon. Man, man. I'm doing my own vlog. I'm all right, shout out to <laughs> So we, we're going to experience today to see how um, your day is like, you know, waking up as an American here in Ghana, right. your day-to-day -day life. So guys, if there's something you're interested, come with us. Let's go. All right, guys, so this is my day in the life of being an American in Ghana. Right now, our power is out, so that is the first thing that tells you that you're in Ghana. You wake up to the power being out. So, um, you know, I'm just with the homie right now. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get some fuel for the car right here and then I'm gonna meet up with a few other friends I'll probably get some food and I actually have a studio session tonight so we're gonna hit the studio make some music um, also probably a few other things in the, in the little mix so yeah let's get it yeah, So now we're gonna hit up Mr. Print. We're gonna see if he has power, and uh, we're gonna try to print out a few things for uh, some friends of mine. Um, yeah, we're, we're gonna check if this guy has power. I haven't been there in a while. It's been like at least probably since my mom was here the last time I was here. So you know, it'll be good to see him. And uh, yeah, let's let's hit up Mr. Print. Yeah. So we out here at Medina Station. Charles just pulled up, you know what I'm saying? We're about to get right on the uh, on the style. I'm already sweaty, this is crazy. Bro. Sun beating down, you know, it's hot. But you know, we're gonna have a, a good time. And uh, where, where are you taking us, bro? We're to Hacho. Hacho's far, right? I don't know this is Okay, all right. That, all right, let's get it. So we get to the place. It says it's open, but the door is locked. I mean, the stuff looks nice, but I mean, yeah. I mean what, what, what are we doing, man? What are we doing? All right. All right, so what we're doing right now is we're looking for a place to eat, hopefully. Um, this place, Atomic, I don't know if I trust some of the places around here, I'm not gonna lie, but uh, we're gonna see if we can find some, some nice Ghanaian food the authentic way. Let's get it. Or two, sorry, two eggs. It's just all the rice, but we'll make it work. All right, so we out here reporting live from, is it too close to my face? I feel like it's really close, bro. It's not? All right. We out here reporting live from a construction site in Atomic because this is the only place we could find with some dang shade. So uh, yeah, we out here uh, about to dive into some, um, some nice jollof rice from <laughs> from <laughs> <laughs> from the other, where, where did we get this from, bro? From like the, across the Palace, station, Palace Mall. From we the got station. Opposite Palace Mall. Or the station. station. Yeah, yeah, from the station. Um, I, I told him. <laughs> Why the chicken look like plantain, bro? I'm, Wait, it looks like plantain. It looks camera. like plantain, bro. It looks like, like what is that? <laughs> okay, I mean, we we gonna see what it's it. like. Take your first bite, bro. Right? Take your first spoon. <laughs> it's busting. That's not bad. I told you. But why does this look like plantain, bro? <laughs> Can you give me this little small that, bro? Come How on, much is that? This was eight C. I I told her eight C's, bro. <laughs> finish the food I give it like a seven out of ten and uh, I uh, you know the chicken looked a little like plantain so I was a little confused but the chicken was fine 
cool drive, but you know, anyways, we're gonna hit up Free the Youth now, hit up the homie A Fruit, we're gonna see what he's up to. Let's get it. I need an intro. I'm here with off-white model, man. That's a big deal. I'm famous. I made it. <laughs> you can join them. They can teach you how to do it. It's all content. Why do you want me to start dancing? You want to learn how to? You want to learn? You want to learn how to dance? Can you teach me? Bro, like some few moves. Yeah, I want to see y'all. Y'all did something like y'all were like. Yeah, he he said he could just show me. I'm telling you, I used to do like I used to do a little no. small small dancing no. like when I was a real young kid. No, like, a long time ago. <laughs> no. like, maybe I can Yo, I can pick up a little song. Can you play your music on that Bluetooth so they can just dance to it? Yeah, yeah. So this how Ghana works. We literally just saw just a happy. bunch of dancers and Mike is going to play his music um, for them to dance to it and teach him how to dance the way that they dance. So, I guess, yeah. yeah. Stuff just be happening, bro. Just like that. This is what Ghana does, you know. They just came up with a dance to my song. This is wild, bro. Dancers in Ghana. Shout out Jeffrey. The white banner. The white banner. Yeah, boy banner right here. K Bomb music. We going global, man. That's what I'm talking about. And I want BTS. Like every shit. <laughs> Maybe the time we sit in the couch, I wanted to just. Basketball with in the NBA, yeah. So, how's it like you know when buying something? Uh, oh man, do you often get people trying to cheat you and how do you manage your way? Yes, yeah, so not anymore. That doesn't really happen as much as it used to because I kind of understand how to speak like a Ghanaian, like at least English. You know, I know a few tree words here and there, so I'm able to kind of navigate. But when I first got here, it definitely was a struggle. You know, people charging me triple quadruple what it was supposed to be and you just kind of navigate but yeah no it, it it's been way better it's yeah been way better, so. so um what do you do it differently that helped um it better? i think 
definitely speaking in a way speaking where like speaking English like a Ghanaian, but also like speaking tree, you yeah. know, like I'll, I'll ask, you know, Pacho is saying, like, what's the price, you know? Pacho is saying, yeah, yeah, and I yeah. is saying, and, and I say it again, uh, Pacho is saying, Pacho is saying, oh, he's trying, yeah, that's no, not how you say I've, it, I've like, never, I've never had somebody tell me that, like, what are you saying, like, they understand, oh, really? understand every time, it. or maybe it's a beauty, like, maybe when I go to a beauty, like, that's just how I've heard other people say it, so I just say it it's like that, ASA, ASA, yeah, um, how much is it? But yeah, so that really helped you a lot, right? Mm -hmm. For sure. So I mean like, you figured out that when you speak like a Ghanaian, mm -hmm. you do get a Ghanaian prices. Right. Instead of getting like the Obroni price, that's how they call yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. um, Obroni is not a good term to use, don't ever use it, but you can hear it. But that's what they, they, they call like foreigners, right? So you realize speaking like a Ghanaian helps you a lot, right? For sure. What are some of the things people coming to watch out for to make their transition like easier, you know, transitioning to Ghana? I, Mostly Americans. I would say one of the biggest things, pay attention, this is maybe worldwide, but Ghana specifically, make sure you're paying attention to what is not being said in Ghana. A lot of people can tell you a lot of different things and they can talk and they can talk and they can talk. Pay attention to what they are not saying. That is like the biggest thing I've been able to learn since I've been over here. It's very important. So pay attention to what they are not saying. What yeah. do you mean by that? So if, um, let's say if, okay, maybe this is not the best spot right here. So how do you also handle distractions? <laughs> very big distractions over here, you know. It is it's very big. Yeah, Michael just saw a pretty it's good. Very big. <laughs> Ghana you see a lot of that. But it's um, true. Yeah, so go ahead with it. Okay, so I think as far as paying attention to what is not being said, I would say let's say if so, you're trying to buy some land over here and maybe somebody is like oh, okay we got the paperwork right here you know all you got to do is sign here and you know we'll we'll get all the money sorted everything like that what they're not saying is who else might have owned the land previously they're not saying the people that you have to talk to to sort out so then if you're building something on this land nobody's gonna come and tell you to stop the work nobody's gonna tell you to come in like they're gonna put some sort of vex on you like you just need to pay attention to all of those things yeah okay. that's what I was I mean is moving to Ghana um, different as a single person. Oh yeah, uh, or, it's, it's way different. It's way different. What are the differences yeah, that you should be? Well, I mean, for me personally, the money I'm making, uh, the work that I do, everything is kind of it's single. So yeah. you know, I'm not really thinking about like providing for like a child or anything like that. Compared to somebody who might be moving their whole family over here, they might be thinking about okay, schools for their kids. They got to think about like date night with their wife or whatever. I'm not really thinking about that type of stuff, you know. I mean, you mentioned date night. That means how is dating too? Like mm -hmm. here, mm -hmm. um, for you, like I've you know. done that too, and that has been a wild ride. Let me tell you, um, you know, Ghanaian women are very different from my previous. Oh, sorry. Um, there's been. <laughs> A lot of differences between Ghanaian women and American women, I'll tell you that. Um, certain things that I was not expecting, certain things that kind of came out of nowhere, but it's, it's good though. Ghanaian women are fantastic. Shout out to Ghana women, we love them. You know? Yeah, well, what is like the bad experience, well, what are some of the bad experiences you've had with Ghanaian women? Uh, definitely the one time I was like, got a girl's number, and after like two days of talking to her, she's hitting me up asking me for 2,000 CDs out of nowhere because for she did, I don't even remember what the reason was. She was just like, oh, send me 2,000 CDs, like whatever, whatever. And I was like, nah, I'm, that, I hit that block button and nah, that, that's not it. We, we ain't rocking with that. What, what made it bad? Is it because she asked a stranger or? Yeah, cause I'm just like, I wasn't gonna, even if I know you, I'm not just gonna give you money like that. But then also it's like just the audacity, yeah. the audacity. You're gonna ask me like, like if imagine I just met you and I'm gonna ask you for money, like that's crazy. Like yeah. why would you even? That, what what that do you think about sense. the patriarchy system here, where men are the ones having all the money? Mm -hmm. So obviously the women sometimes look up to them a lot, mm -hmm. which is sometimes it's it's not equal, right? You can yeah, say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what do so, you think? Yeah. Something that uh, I think a lot of people in Ghana do not want to acknowledge is that the women are the backbone of this entire economy. True. But people don't want to talk about it because they're women. So yeah. everybody wants to act like, oh, well, you know, the women just sit down to the side. It's not like over like, um, like you'd see in other countries where it's just like the women are just sit down and shut up. Yeah. But it's microaggressions. Kind of yeah. like the racism in America. It's a lot of microaggressions. It's not like 
you know, mm -hmm. um, up in your face a lot of the time. It's just very like, this is how it's supposed to be. So most people, um, most Americans, when they're moving to Ghana, they often want to ship everything down here, down to the sofa, chest sometimes. And, you know, it, it takes a lot of money yeah. with duty and stuff like that. You've been here for almost three years. Mm -hmm and based on your experiences moving, do you think that is very necessary to ship everything down here? I would say, just buy, you know? I think you would be surprised at the amount of quality things that you can get here. It's about who you know, and um, of course, the high quality, more high-end things are gonna be a little bit more expensive, but if you have the money to pay that, you can get some really quality, really great stuff here when it comes to furniture, when it comes to, you know, even the car that you're getting. I'm looking at cars right now in front of me that it's like the biggest difference is these cars are paid for. Like nobody's paying no car note over here. Like these are super nice cars that everybody's paying like cash. So um, that's a really big difference. You'd be surprised. So. Yeah. And the building behind you is one of the most developed buildings just here. Yeah. Do you expect to see some buildings like that in Ghana? No, definitely not. Not when I first got here. I was very pleasantly surprised, you know, by a lot of the things over here for sure. Yeah. And these houses are like minimum of five hundred thousand mm dollars. -hmm. Some of them go for a million, and all these things are here in Ghana. Um, what would you say were the most misconceptions you knew about or you heard about Ghana before coming coming here? Uh, definitely that you find to still true. That I find still true. Yeah. Um. Hmm. I'm trying to. What think. do you think about Ghanaians appreciating things? white than the local things. Oh, that, well, that's very true. Yeah, That is um, a very true thing. Why do you think that is? That's a worldwide thing. Things have been whitewashed throughout history. Yeah. So it's like really hard to, to break that programming because people are like so stuck in this mindset of like, white is right in Jesus' name. And it's like white Jesus, you get the, the white everything like across a mass society so if i hate to be that guy oh we live in a society but it's like we kind of do live in a place where you know it, it's like a cat and mouse game and the cat is always get to tell his side of the story and the mouse never gets to tell his side so we've all been going through this constant act of like telephone throughout the years throughout generations and nobody's actually telling us like what is really going on it just makes you think it makes you think about what's really going on mm -hmm. i like that you summarize your whole experience living here in Ghana for oh, almost man. three years now. Altogether, it's been a wild ride, man. I've had my time of being broke, crazy broke, and uh, I've had my time of, you know, immense blessings and things just falling into my lap, like how it is right now. So I'm just gonna continue to ride that wave. And uh, a lot of unexpected things, having to do some things non-traditional, and um, just expanding your mind. That's what I've been on. So, so what, what did you have to do differently that shifted you from the trajectory of being broke to being in the position that you are, you are now? I think what I, what I had to do for myself was stop taking everything as things that were happening to me and just see it as opportunity. So anything that I would see where it wouldn't be just like how it was back home, I would be like, offset by it and I wouldn't want to deal with it instead of now I'm looking at it as okay let me just embrace this because it's not like it's going to change it might change but it might take another 100 years for it to change so why don't I just walk through this you know like be able to be adapted to my situation and it, it makes things a lot smoother so that's what I all right so what would you say I mean obviously I experienced today with you but what would you say is your day-to-day -day activity you know walk me through you know from the morning to like late late night okay um, sometimes so let's start from first in the morning when you wake up so uh on a day like today we wake up with no power because you know sometimes that does happen uh it just uh, light off and you just kind of like all right this is what it is make sure you have your power bank charge your phone charge all that stuff um but uh if power's not out then um you know i might go online you know do some social media marketing and uh start a well, first, before I even get on my phone, I just wake up and appreciate the day. Thank God for the day because, you know, that that's how I'm even able to be able to have the, all the blessings that I have. Is If it wasn't for God, then I can't do any of this. So first and foremost, I stay thankful, you know, might get into some meditation. And then, then I'll get on my phone, do some social media marketing, um, reach out to businesses. You know, um, we have a social media marketing service, digital brand. Shout out RGA, shout out Roman Cones um, for helping us out with that. Um, and then, um, you know, depending on the day, I have a very, like, kind of fluid schedule. So, you know, sometimes I might have a business meeting, 
sometimes I'll start writing. I also am a musician, so you know, might start working on a beat. Um, I can have a studio session like I'm about to have in a couple hours, you know. There, there's a lot of different things that I'll do from day to day, but um, and usually I just ended up going back home, you know, cleaning the sweat off because, you know, the sweat is going to stick to you when you get to Ghana. And uh, coming back home, you know, shower all that off and then do some meditation. And yeah, that's, that's pretty much what I'm doing. Comparing your life with another distraction. God, hey! Another one. Can we, um, oh, sorry. I forgot my train of thought for a very good reason, I think. So, comparing your lifestyle in the state to your lifestyle here in Ghana, would you say you're living a better life? Or what, what would you say? Yeah, I would say one million percent. And genuinely, I feel like if I'm making money in Ghana, what am I living in America for? Like, honestly, I miss my family, don't get me wrong. I miss my family with all my heart. Um, and that is something that I, I deal with from on a day-to-day -day basis, honestly. But other than that, I'm just like, the business opportunities, the, the ability to make something out of nothing. You can literally make whatever you want with no boundaries here. Um, and that is just not really reality in America. So, you know, there's, there's so many gates and bars to kind of block you from whatever you want to do there. As opposed to you come over here and yeah, you might have to deal with some non-traditional ways of thinking and, you know, get in, into some things that you wouldn't normally think you would, but um, ev everything is wide open, everything. So um, I feel like I, I'm living a way better life over here, honestly. I like that. Now, guys, this is an amazing vlog. Um, what we want to do now is to um, always jump in in a you know a life of an American living here in Ghana, a diaspora and African American. Uh, you know, just to show you their day to day life, their hustle, um, the hustle and bustle, what they go through every day. So if it's something you're interested, um, stay tuned. He's also a musician, uh, Cave on Music. A content creator i'll leave all his information in the description and also you can go check him out listen to his music support him um you do have the cash app and everything so if you want to support him um financially with his music or whatever not that he's asking for it but i mean to support uh everything will be in the description and also in the screen so thank you so much for watching if you have a message for them all hey man you can do anything you can put your mind to that's all i got Right, tap in. All right, what do you have to say? Let's send a message. Bossu Ghana, you're there, will I? I brought you from Mumbai, I'm going to feel you, won't I? Eh, Chichingawa, fashion, me. Chichingawa, eh. Ubari, Ubari, I'm going to show you, and I'll be in your biari. Blah, Bossu, blah. What I say? Eh, Ubari, I'm going to show you, man. Everything there, yeah. Eh, one love, eh, Bossu. <laughs> I like the energy. I love this thing. I like this thing. The woman, they love this thing. I like that. I like that. This guy has too much energy. I mean, I can't energy. Energy. I need to dance. Don't go very far. I'll grab some cash and before I leave, I'll share some. Okay, boss. Thank you. 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 Thank uh, yeah. What's alligator? Alligator. Oh, mampa. Mampa. Yeah. Real animal. Yeah. No, it's what mampa? Alligator. Why are you gonna get it? Oh. Oh, you can get it in bush. Really? Oh, really? So you give me alligator. Uh, alligator. Uh, me and proper. That's why we are brothers. That's a very yeah, nice. They look. They look. <laughs> they look. They look alike. Yeah. They look alike. Nice. Bro. Thank you, brothers. One Thank love. Man, boss. You. What's your name? David. Benita. Do you know how I met this guy? I think he's so smart. One day he told me a story about how his friend took him from Kaswa and dropped him on Accra, right? And he need money to go back. He's been abandoned, right? So what do I know? I'm like, I want to support this guy, right? So I see him. I just, you know, donate. And guess what? I just took five steps and he's telling the whole story to another person. <laughs> so, I mean, he's hustling. Wait, wait, where's your parents? No, oh, it's in that castle. Your, your mom is in castle, yeah. yeah. Anyways, anytime you come to East Legon, show him love, donate some money, you know, bless it. If you get money, what will you use it? I used to go to school. To go to school. Yeah. Show some love next time you see this guy. What's your name? Ebenezer Pepra. Ebenezer Pepra. All right.